When you guys got together in Miami, yeah. the conversations with Chris about his role, mm-hmm. but also the decision to sort of move him to the five, which, by the way, was not right away. No, it wasn't. Like, was there pushback on that at the time? Do you remember, like, the, those conversations? Because, you know, I, I know UD was was there. Yep. Joel Anthony was there. Yep. yep. Um, yeah, my first year, Big Z was there and Big Eric Z Dampier. And Eric Dampier. That, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm going to tell you when it all changed. Obviously, my first year there, you know, played great basketball, got all the way to the finals, losing the finals. I play like shit. Um, Spo is the reason why we were a better team and our team was more assembled properly. That summer, he went to Oregon and hung out with Chip Kelly. Oh, interesting. He, he, when we lost to Dallas, he went to Oregon and hung out with Chip Kelly and learned to spread offense and tried to figure out if he could translate that to basketball. And don't know the super conversations that him and Chip had, but I know when he came back to us, he knew in order for us to reach our potential, one, I had to be fucking 10 times better than I was in that previous June finals, but Chris Bosh had to go to the five. And CB being who he is, there was no pushback. There was no pushback. He knew in order for us to reach our potential that CB would have to go to the five. And we had to spread. We had to, he had to start working on his corner three faithfully every day after practice. Corner three every day after practice. We're going to post you up. We're going to get you your elbow catches. The offense is going to run through you at times. But in order to bring, you know, the Tyson Chandlers out of the paint, in order to bring the Roy Hibberts out of the paint, in order to bring Tim Duncan out of the paint at times, in order to bring Kevin Garnett out of the paint, you got to hit these corner threes. You got to at least be a threat. And Spo, Spo knew it. He had that. He had that vision. He went and learned. He said the way I. He said the way I coached in that finals versus Dallas, unacceptable. I told myself the way I played, unacceptable. And he came back with vengeance, and I was all I, I was locked the fuck in from from start to finish. But it was Spo. I had a question about the Bosch, Bosch spacing, but because you just said that, was that the low point for you in your career? Oh, for sure. Uh, Two thousand eleven, the lowest. Yeah, yeah, the lowest. Yeah, the lowest. What is what, the Bosch spacing? What did that sort of unlock? I'm, I'm curious. Like, what were the actions? What what, what was the the, the two man game? Yeah. What were the reads? The cutting. Slot cut. The slot cut. <laughs> The slot cuts, the slot cuts, it unlocked the slot cuts. It unlocked exactly what myself and D-Wade thrive on. Dribble penetration, slot cutting. Pick and roll happens, you tag, slot cutting. Yeah. It, it unlocked all that. And, and we all know how great D-Wade is on the baseline. It's hard to cut behind the defense when X5 is standing there the whole time because, you know, the offensive five is there. You know, so... You know, you hit me on a pocket pass now, you know, I get the pocket pass from, from Chalmers or, or from Norris Cole, you know, and now Bosch is in a strong corner. Are you going to leave him or not? If you do, he's going to tag you. And if not, when I roll, now you got X3 or X2 tagging on me on the roll. And nine times out of 10, that, that, that guy that's playing the elbow, that's supposed to X to the corner, he's Xing out to the three-point line and D-Wave slashing right behind him. It just it unlocked a, so much for our offense, and it gave myself and D Wade in transition. We had this thing called the Mack Truck Lane. So from basically from the block to the block. So San Francisco, we stand on the free throw line. Yeah, you got one block on one side, one block on this side. I can side. picture a basketball court. Yeah, we do it for the viewers. <laughs> I'm not questioning JJ's expertise. <laughs> no, I know what you're saying. First day of training camp, we had that whole thing taped off. The bigs were not allowed to run in between the Mack truck lane. From the first day of training camp all the way to game one. Prohibited. You're not allowed to, you got to, and if, the, and if I'm bringing the ball up and the big is behind me, he can't cross the court. He has to run wide behind. This is all, this is all 
Spo is like, you know, he's he's that damn good. Some Twitter sleuth will correct me on this, and I will accept it if I'm wrong. But in my mind, when I think of five out or delay, I think of the Miami Heat with Chris Bosh. As maybe it wasn't the originator, but the first time I'm like, oh, this is this is different and this is happening was the Miami Heat with Chris Bosch. Yeah. And sure. it changed everything. It changed everything. Changed the whole team. Changed the whole team. Then we added Ray. Shane. Added Shane. Added Mike Miller. We added the spacing. And CB could pass. He could rebound and push. There wasn't many fives at that time that was rebounding and pushing the break. You see it all the time now. Right. You see Bam. Bam does it. Bam does it all the Yoke, time. Yoke, of yeah, course. Yeah, MVP but, but. of the league. Yoke does it. It's like CB was pushing the break. Okay, if he ain't have nothing early in trance, boom, right to a DHO. Second side, swing, swing. Like, he's, he was a smart, he was just smart. But, I mean, obviously, when you move from one position where you're so dominant, you think of CB in Toronto where he mainly played the four, almost probably – 95% of the time played the four and averaged 25 and 10 or 12. The ball exclusively went through him in the mid post. Every single time. On either block, really. Yeah. But it's, it's remarkable that he changed that. Yeah, he changed that. I want to, bef- before we talk more spacing, I want to touch on one last thing with the heat. And that is, I feel like in the NBA, the, the, the phrase super team or the, the term super team is, is a little bit, bit of a misnomer because you can, have, you can have a big three, right? You still need four or five ancillary role players Absolutely. who star in their role and then complement the stars no question about it and it doesn't work it doesn't work unless you have those guys and you've lived it multiple times i've lived it i've lived it i mean obviously my my first year in miami yeah we had a big three and everyone said it's a super team super team and super team that but we had to build our team around all minimum guys which was still okay but we didn't fill out the complimentary guys enough yeah we had rio we had Udonis, you know, but we didn't we didn't have enough as far as enough complimentary guys to actually make it all work. And we still made it to the finals. We still made it to the finals and we still probably should have won the finals, but I still give credit. You listen, it is what it is. You you win and you lose, and we lost. There's no Dallas was fucking good and they hit it, they hit a stride at the right time. Dirk was unbelievable. Um, but my second year we was able to grab some complimentary players and role players that really just, I'm talking about super, superstars in their roles. And it goes back to my first year in Cleveland. My first year in Cleveland, yes, we got Kevin out of a trade. We lost in the finals. We wasn't really whole to unlock everything. We wasn't whole enough to unlock everything. Then we was able to add Channing Frye, add Richard Jefferson. To that, to that second team, yeah. add those guys, and then the experience that we had from the year previously. You know, Jr. got better and Shump. Yeah. You know, and obviously we were healthier. You know, Kyrie goes down in the finals with you know busted kneecap, and Kev obviously separated yeah, sure. shoulder in year one. But you're absolutely right. The complimentary guys are ultimately the ones that will help you win the championship for sure. Yeah, and so- classified as a as a as a real. Super team. Right. So I think, I think you know, the goal of, of this show is to really just, like, talk about basketball, right? I love it. And, it, and it's great. And I love, I love it. it. I love it. And I could do it all day. Yeah, me too. You know, I, we both live online. Let's be honest. We live online. <laughs> We're well aware of all the, the discourse. I, 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 I have to participate in the discourse. And, oh, and I, I said this. I, I, I want to participate so much know, more. I, uh, I, I uh I said this the other day. I was like, the discourse has a place, right? It provides yep. a level of entertainment. Yeah. And I get it. And I, I feel like sometimes I get annoyed at 
a couple keywords that get involved in discourse. And we're not going to do this every episode. We're not going to, we're not going to do this, but I, I just, <laughs> on this point we're making yeah. about how a team works, yeah. there's, there's the, um, the word important. Who's the more important player for the Boston Celtics? Who's the most important player yeah. for the Boston Celtics? Um, I also get annoyed with the word pressure. Right, those are the two words that drive me fucking crazy. <laughs> pressure, in particular, because if you if you've like been around, you know that most guys in the NBA put an insane amount of pressure on themselves. Sure. That's why we all have fucking anxiety. <laughs> like we all put so much pressure on ourselves, and the important word bugs me. Because the best player is always the most important player. It's very hard to win in the NBA if the player who has the most outsized impact (laughs) isn't at his best. And no offense, 2011 is a great example of that. I wasn't at my best. You weren't at your best and you lost. If I played anything like I did in the Eastern Conference Finals, we win. But you could have been at your best. And the role players could have been bad. So, like, for me, this is why I get annoyed. Because I'm like, yeah. Like, when I play on the Clippers, CP and Blake, they were the most important guys right. on our team. But DeAndre and I had a role. Jamal had a role. Matt Barnes had a role. Luke and Bob Mute the next two yeah. years had a role. Like, we all had an important role. And guess what? We put a lot of pressure on ourselves yeah. to actually play well. And actually contribute to winning. Yeah. And I feel like we live in this fucking 2K world <laughs> where we're like putting a roster together. And it's like, yeah. who can, how can we put as many good players that don't even make sense together? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it drives me crazy. It's like, what's wrong with this team? Well, it's very simple. Basketball is a very organic thing. And the players and their skills have to complement each other. Have to complement each other. And... Chris Bosch is a great example of that. The sacrifice to figure out how can my skills, and maybe I have to develop some of those. You mentioned the three-point shooting. How can I figure out how to complement? Right. It's going to make me better. It's going to make LeBron better. It's going to make D. Wade better. And it's going to make our team better. And that's basketball. And that's basketball. But, that's, but that also comes from, a, to go back to episode one, basketball IQ as well. Him having the basketball IQ and the knowledge of saying, yeah, I could still be in Toronto averaging 25 and 12, but I didn't come here for that shit. I came here to win championships. And we fucking lost in year one. What can I do to compliment my teammates? And what can I do to broaden my game out to where we don't lose in year two? Fucking talk about growth mindset. And everyone's talking about, you know, Chris Bosh was this before that. No one ever asked Chris Bosh. No one ever asked Chris Bosh about how he feels. <laughs> everyone just speaks for him. Yeah. No one asked him how he feels. He knew he was making a sacrifice. We all knew he was making sacrifices. But we knew what the, what the fuck we all came together for, and that was to win championships. And that's what we did. Hey guys, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching Mind the Game podcast. If you like it, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you.